All right, we are on the last chapter. This book is so good, isn't it? It's called All This Long Time. The war would end. Uncle Henrik had said that, and it was true. The war ended almost two long years later. Anne Marie was 12. Church bells rang all over Copenhagen early that May evening. The Danish flag was raised everywhere. People stood in the streets and wept as they sang the national anthem of Denmark. Anne Marie stood on the balcony of the apartment with her parents and sister and watched. Up and down the street and across the other side, she could see flags and banners in almost every window. She knew that many of those apartments were empty. For nearly two years now, neighbors had tended the plants and dusted the furniture and polished the candlesticks for the Jews who had fled. Her mother had done so for the Rosens. It is what friends do, Mama had said. Now neighbors had entered each unoccupied waiting apartment, opened a window, and hung a symbol of freedom here. This evening, Mrs. Johansen's face was wet with tears. Kirstie, waving a small flag, sang. Her blue eyes were bright. Even Kirstie was growing up. No longer was she a light-hearted chatterbox of a child. Now she was taller, more serious, and very thin. She looked like the pictures of Lisa at seven in the old album. Peter Nielsen was dead. It was a painful fact to recall on this day when there was so much joy in Denmark. But Anne Marie forced herself to think of her red-headed almost brother and how devastating the day had been. The day was when they received the news that Peter had been captured and executed by the Germans in the public square in Copenhagen. He had written a letter to them from prison the night before he was shot. It had simply said that he loved them, that he was not afraid, and that he was proud to have done what he could for his country and for the sake of all free people. He had asked in a letter to be buried beside Lisa. But even that was not to be for Peter. The Nazis refused to return the bodies of the young men they shot. They simply buried them there where they were killed and marked the graves only with numbers. Later, Anne Marie had gone to the place with her parents and they had laid flowers there on the bleak numbered ground. That night, Anne Marie's parents told her the truth about Lisa's death at the beginning of the war. She was part of the resistance, too, Papa explained, part of the group that fought for our country in whatever ways they could. We didn't know, Mama added. She didn't tell us. Peter told us after she died. Oh, Papa, Anne Marie cried. Mama, they didn't shoot Lisa, did they? The way they did Peter in the public square with people watching? She wanted to know, wanted to know it all, but wasn't certain that she could bear the knowledge. But Papa shook his head. She was with Peter and others in a cellar where they held secret meetings to make plans. Somehow the Nazis found out and they raided the place that evening. They all ran different ways trying to escape. Some of them were shot, Mama told her sadly. Peter was shot in the arm. Do you remember that Peter's arm was bandaged and in a sling at Lisa's funeral? He wore a coat over it so that no one would notice and a hat to hide his red hair. The Nazis were looking for him. Anne-Marie didn't remember. She hadn't noticed. The whole day had been a blur of grief. But what about Lisa, she asked. If she wasn't shot, what happened? From the military car, they saw her running, and they simply ran her down. So it was true what you said, that she was hit by a car. It was true, Papa told her. They were all so young, Mama said, shaking her head. She blinked, closed her eyes for a moment, and took a long, deep breath. So very, very young, with so much hope. <clears throat> Now remembering Lisa, Anne-Marie looked down, looked from the balcony down into the street. She saw that below, amid the music, singing in the sound of the church bells, people were dancing. It brought back another memory, the memory of Lisa so long ago, wearing the yellow dress, dancing with Peter on the night that they announced their engagement. She turned and went into her bedroom, where the blue trunk st still stood in the corner, as it had all these years. Opening it, Opening it, Anne-Marie saw that the yellow dress had begun to fade. It was discolored at the edges where it had lain so long in folds. Carefully, she spread open the skirt of the dress and found the place where Ellen's necklace lay hidden in the pocket. The little star of David still gleamed gold. Papa, she said, returning to the balcony where her father was standing with the others, watching the rejoicing cloud, watching the rejoicing crowd, she opened her hand and showed him the necklace. Can you fix this? I have kept it all, all along this time. It was Ellen's. Her father took it from her and examined the broken clasp. Yes, he said, I can fix it. And when the Rosens come home, you can give it back to Ellen. Until then, Anne-Marie told him, I will wear it myself. 
What a great book. Lots to think about. I hope you enjoyed it.